16 titles with a cover date of March 1938 hit the stands. This was the first of three months in a row where there would be growth in the number of titles each month. Feature Funnies number 6 from Quality Comics, March 1938. Parts of this issue are reprinted from WAGS Magazine, the UK edition from Editor's Press Service, issue number 32, released August 6, 1937. Highlights of this issue include a cover of Joe Palooka by artist Rube Goldberg, and Lala Palooza is a four-page story from writer-artist Rube Goldberg, and it reprints from the Frank J. Markey Syndicate. Will Eisner gives us Hawks of the Seas, a four-page historical story, and it is reprinted from WAG's issue number 30 from Editor's Press Service. And Will Eisner uses the alias Willis Renzi as his alias for being the writer on this story. The Clock returns in The Clock Strikes, a seven-page story from writer-artist George E. Brenner in this early superhero story featuring The Clock, and the first appearance of the villain Slick Spera. Jim Swift appears in a four-page story from writer-artist Ed Cronin, and this is the last appearance of the Jim Swift strip. Funny Pages, Volume 2, Number 6, Centaur Comics, March 1938. This is the first issue of this title, now published by Centaur Publications. The cover art is by Bob Wood. Centaur Publications, also known as Centaur Comics, ran from 1938 to 42, one of the earliest American comic book publishers. By January of 1938, Ultim Comics was bought out by Joe Hardy, Fred Gardner, and Raymond Kelly's Centaur Publications, which had been publishing pulp magazines since 1933. Hardy, Gardner, and Kelly used this base to create Centaur Comics, which began publishing this month of March 1938. They also drew on the back inventory of stories to fill out the early issues of their new titles with reprints. Centaur Publications seized production at the end of 1940, but continued to produce comics under the name Comic Corporation of America. Centaur seized publication four years later, primarily due to poor distribution, but in that period had created several colorful characters, including Bill Everett's Amazing Man. Everett would later go on to comics fame by introducing Namor the Submariner to Timely Comics. And Everett's first nationally published comic work was the cover of Amazing Mystery Funnies No. 1, later in 1938. Funny Picture Stories, Volume 2, Number 6, from Centaur Publishing, March 1938. This is the first issue published by Centaur Comics of this title. Fred Gardner did the cover and some art. Parts of the issue are reprinted from Funny Picture Stories, Volume 2, Number 4, which just came out months earlier from Ultim Comics, December 1937. Joe Hardy, as Uncle Joe, as an alias, has an editorial introducing Uncle Joe as the new editor of the four new titles from Centaur Publications. The cover art by Fred Gardner. And Laughing at Life is a one-page story with art possibly by Paul Gustafson. And Gustafson also did the five-page story Phony Crimes under the alias Gus. Insurance Ike is a one-page story from artist Jack Cole. Get Your Man is an eight-page story from writer Harold Martin with art by Fred Gardiner in this detective mystery. And Nothing But the Truth is a one-page story with art possibly by Paul Gustafson. Star Comics number 10 from Centaur Publications, March 1938. This is the first issue published by Centaur Publications. It's rated a seven or scarce in the Gerber Rarity Index. It features a Charles Biro cover art. Don Marlowe is a four-page story written by Ken Fitch with art by Fred Gardiner. Gil Fox also contributes art to this issue, and there is a Little Nemo appearance. Star Ranger number 10 from Centaur Publications, March 1938. This is tied with Funny Pages 6, Funny Picture Story 6, as the first comic published by Centaur Comics, who purchased it indirectly from Harry Chesler. There's a Mile High pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. Cover art is by Fred Schwab. The Roundup is a one-page story from artist Fred Gardiner, and this is a busy issue for him. He also gives us Trailblazers, a one-page story, Lying Lou, two-page story, Killing to Live, a two-page story. Wild Horse, a four-page story. Medicine Man is a one-page story drawn by Paul Gustafson. And Gustafson also draws Spurs, a one-page story. 
Just the Type is a one-page filler story from artist Jack Cole. Feature book number 11 from David McKay Publications, March 1938, features Little Annie Rooney. She's featured on the cover with art by Daryl McClure. And this issue, totally dedicated to Annie Rooney, features 71 pages of comic stories, all written and drawn by Daryl McClure. Features the characters Annie Rooney, Zero, and Miss Lydia, and features reprints from the Annie Rooney newspaper comic strips of 1936. Little Annie Rooney is a comic strip about a young orphan girl who traveled about with her dog Zero. King Features Syndicate launched the strip in January 1927, not long after it was apparent that the Chicago Tribune had a huge hit with Little Orphan Annie. Daryl McClure, born February 25th, 1903, lived until February 27th, 1987. An American cartoonist and illustrator best known for his work on the comic strip Little Annie Rooney from 1930 to 1966. The strip took its name from an 1890 song by Michael Nolan. Ace Comics number 12, published by David McKay Publications, March 1938, features a Joe Musial cover art. Highlight characters include Blondie, Jungle Jim, and Ripley's Believe It or Not. Detective Comics number 13 from DC Comics, March 1938. The cover art is by Craig Flessel. And Flessel also gives us Speed Saunders, a six-page story. Will Eli is the writer and artist for Larry Steele, six pages. And also, it's believed Eli may be the artist of Hero of the Air, a one-page short story. Spy returns in four pages from Siegel and Schuster in their adventure story, featuring the characters Bart Reagan, Sally Norris, and the first appearance of Peter Rawley. And Slam Bradley returns in a 13-page story, also from Siegel and Schuster. The Funnies, number 18, published by Dell Comics, March 1938, features a humor children all ages cover of the character Herky. Dan Dunn comes back in a four-page story from writer Norman Marsh. Don Dixon and the Hidden Empire is a two-page story from writer Bob Moore and art by Carl Fufer in this early science fiction comic strip, reprinted from the Don Dixon Sundays at the Daily Eagle. Tad to the Tanbark is a one-page story also from the team of Bob Moore and Carl Fufer in this adventure story from the Tad of the Tanbark Sundays also at the Daily Eagle. Tailspin Tommy returns in a three-page story from writer Glenn Chafin and art by Hal Forrest in their aviation story from the Tailspin Tommy Sundays at the Bell Syndicate. And The Four Aces is a one-page story from writer-artist Hal Forrest in this aviation story from the Four Aces Sundays at the Bell Syndicate. And Sheldon Mayer gives us two pages of Scribbly. Tip Top Comics number 23 published by United Feature Syndicate March 1938. The cover features <coughs> The Captain and the Kids. Featuring the characters Hans and Fritz Katzenjammer, the Captain, and Mama Katzenjammer. Lil Abner is featured in a five-page story from writer-artist Al Cap. The Mad Moon Mine is a three-page story from Lieutenant Fred Methot with art possibly by Hoyle. This is a horror, suspense, western frontier story featuring the character The Claw. It is chapter three. This is debatably the first horror-themed comic strip in modern comics. Tarzan appears in five pages from Hal Foster. Joe Jinx is a one-page story from Vic Forsyth. And Victor Forsyth, born August 24th, 1885, lived until May 24th, 1962, an American artist most known for his illustrations and desert paintings. In 1918, he created his most famous cartoon, Joe's Car, and 10 years later, he renamed the cartoon Joe Jinx, the name of the character. This was done since Joe had gone from being a car-obsessed man to an airplane pilot. He officially retired from the comics in 1938 to focus on being one of the original desert painters. King Comics number 24, published by David McKay Publications, March 1938, features Popeye and Henry among Wimpy and Olive Oil, all on the cover with art by Joe Musial. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. Thimble Theater is featured in a four-page story from writer-artist E.C. Cigar, reprinting the Thimble Theater Sundays from King Features Syndicate, which includes Popeye. Flash Gordon is a four-page story from writer Don Moore, with art by Alex Raymond from the Flash Gordon Sundays at King Features Syndicate. Sport Features is a one-page story with art by Jack Burnley, reprinted from the Sport Features Sundays at King Features Syndicate. Mandrake the Magician, featured in a four-page story from writer Lee Falk with art by Phil Davis reprinted from the Mandrake the Magician Sundays 
at King Feature Syndicate. New Adventure Comics number 25, published by DC Comics, March 1938. Cover art is by Craig Fussell. There is a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this issue. Federal Men Return in a four-page story from Siegel and Schuster in their detective mystery. And this story features the first appearance of the junior Federal Men of 3000 AD. Dale Daring returns in a two-page story from writer-artist Will Eli. The adventure story features Captain Don Brewster, but Dale Daring does not appear in this story. Monastery of the Blue God is a four-page story from writer Malcolm Wheeler Nicholson with art by Munson Paddock. The adventure story features Corporal Drenoff, and this is the end of the series, the final issue published. Robin Hood returns in part three in a four-page story from writer-artist Sven Elvin. The Adventures of Steve Conrad is a four-page story from writer-artist Craig Flessel. Tale of Two Cities, a six-page story, original script by Charles Dickens, and this adaptation by Myrna Gamble, who also did the artwork. The historical series ends in this issue with episode 22. The story is now complete. And Crusades is a three-page story from writer-artist Vernon Henkel, featuring the character Guy de Lusignan. This is the only appearance of this strip. Nadir, Master of Magic, is a four-page story from writer-artist Will Eli in this early supernatural story. And Captain Quick is featured in a four-page story from writer-artist Sven Elvin. This is also the end of this series, with episode 22 being the final strip. Popular Comics number 26, published by Dell Comics, March 1938. The cover features Dick Tracy, Little Orphan Annie, Ski Six Wallet, and Uncle Willie. Dick Tracy appears in a four-page story from Chester Gould, Little Orphan Annie in four pages from Harold Gray, Terry and the Pirates in two pages from Milton Caniff, and this is reprinted from the Terry and the Pirates Sundays over at the Chicago Tribune, copyright 1936. Don Winslow of the Navy is a two-page story from writer Lieutenant Commander Frank V. Martinek, USNR, and art by Leon Baroth. The Adventure Military Story is reprinted from Don Winslow of the Navy Sundays from the Bell Syndicate in October 1936. Mickey Mouse Magazine number 30, or Volume 3, number 6, published by Western Publishing, March 1938, features Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse on the cover. This is the third and final Snow White serial issue. And the Lonesome Ghost appears in this issue. More Fun Comics number 30, published by DC Comics, March 1938. This is the first DC comic to ever reach a 30th issue, and only the second modern comic book title ever to reach 30 issues. The Oriental cover is by Craig Flussell. It's the first non-humor cover in this series. Gerber calls it scarce and estimates between 20 and 50 copies existing. There's a mile-high pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. Cover art by Craig Flussell. Sandra of the Secret Service appears in a three-page story from artist Will Eli. Dr. Occult return in a two-page supernatural story from Siegel and Schuster under the aliases of Leaguer and Ruths. Jack Woods returns in a four-page story, artist Will Eli. Hooves of the Tartar Horde is a four-page story from writer Malcolm Wheeler Nicholson with art by Alexander Nikitin. This historical adventure story features the forces of Genghis Khan capture the city of Achar in Persia. The story would be continued in Warrior No. 1, published by Blackerby seven years later in 1945. Spike Spaulding returns in a two-page story from Vince Sullivan. This is the last appearance of this strip. Buzz Brown appears in a six-page story from writer-artist Craig Flessel. And this is the first appearance of Buzz Brown. Radio Squad is a two-page story from Siegel and Schuster, featuring the characters Sandy Keen and Jimmy. Little Linda appears in a two-page story from writer-artist Whitney Ellsworth. This young reader story features the characters Linda and Lars Larson. And this is the last appearance of this strip. And Johnny Law is a four-page story from artist Will Eli. Pirate Gold is two pages from writer-artist Sven Elvin in this historical story featuring Captain Dennis. And this is the last appearance of this strip. Snow White and Her Friends is the feature of Talk About Talkies, a two-page story with script by Kathleen Waters featuring the characters Snow White, Jane Withers, and Glenn Morris. 
and Hope Hazard is a lengthy nine-page story from artist Alex Lovey. The detective mystery features the first appearance of Hope Hazard. This is the only appearance of this strip. Famous Funnies, number 44, from Eastern Color, March 1938, still the longest-running modern comic book to this date. The cover features the characters Okie Dokes and Big Chief Wahoo. Screen Oddities is a one-page illustrated story from writer Roscoe Fawcett and art by Bruno Thompson. Screen Oddities is reprinted from the Screen Oddities daily panel at the Bell Syndicate. It features many movie stars such as Mae Clark, Ginger Rogers, Nelson Eddy, Clark Gable, Robert Taylor, Charlie Chaplin, and Marlene Dietrich. Buck Rogers returns in a four-page story from writer Phil Nolan with art by Dick Calkins in this early science fiction story, copyright John F. Dill. Life's Like That returns in a one-page story from writer-artist Fred Nayer in his humor title, copyright The Consolidated News. War on Crime returns for three pages from writer Rex Collier with art possibly by Kemp Sterrett, copyright Ledger Syndicate. This is the first modern comic crime series. Big Chief Wahoo appears in a one-page story from writer Alan Saunders with art by Elmer Wagen. This humor story features the first appearance of this character, copyright the publisher's syndicate. And Jerry Iger as S.M. Iger gives us the one-page story, Bobby, aimed at younger readers, copyright Eisner Iger. <laughs> 